Hi guys, um, Ricky here. Um, we have Gary from Geeser Electrical, so our local smart spark. Um, thanks for coming in, Gary. Thanks for having me, Ricky. Looking now, forward to you. Yeah, um, I've been looking forward to this all week as well, Gary. Um, now, one of the things that I really wanted to pick your brain on, so normally, obviously, when we do the videos, we uh, like to have a, a chat about lifestyle. Um, security cameras is probably something that I'm getting asked more and more about, not just from landlords and tenants, but also from people looking at making improvements to their house. So um, I, I guess, you know, really the first question is, you know, why are people installing them? Because I'm not only getting people say, I'm worried about someone breaking in these days. Well, there's a number of reasons people are thinking about it. And it has, you're right, it has really become the norm. Security, people feeling safe within their own premises is really a, a, an issue these days. 10 years ago, is you, when you had an alarm system, a burglar alarm, it was normal to have one. When you had cameras, people looked at you and went like, what are you hiding? Today, it's the other way around. It becomes the norm. It's actually gone that far, if you're security conscious, that how often do you hear a burglar alarm going off in your street and people don't even look anymore? So it doesn't provide the same thing. It's as not the as same as deterrent you, that it used to be. That's, that's, that's exactly right. And this is how you should look at, at cameras themselves. Cameras, in my opinion, should really be a deterrent. And people will note differences in camera qualities as in a deterrent. So you need to determine what is it I would like to achieve, where would I like to have them, and what's the purpose behind them. Okay. As a, as a story, a, a client said, look, I'm going to put a pool in the backyard. From my kitchen window, I can't see the pool. I got little kids. What can we do? So for those people, it was peace of mind, they were able to watch the kids over the pool without leaving the kitchen or the living area. So it really is horses for courses. What's, what's the purpose yeah, of what I'm, would you like to do? I'm finding a lot more of that these days when we're having questions. A lot of the time with the, the bigger houses, we get the growing families and the upsize. They, they're not moving to neighborhoods that are, you know, they're worried about people breaking in. But if you've got teenagers at home, sometimes you're more <laughs> worried about the damage from the household than outside of the neighborhood. So. Is that, is that a common thing for you? You're getting families that are wanting to just, peace of mind, I can keep an eye on the kids, I can see who's coming and going. Maybe there's you know, parcels dropped off and I know to you know, basically get someone to swing by and pick it up for argument's sake if I'm out at work. Funnily enough, a few years ago, there was this big party over in Queensland, this, this Cody bloke who, did, who posted on Facebook, I'm having a party and was an open door. And how many people rock, rocked up in there? Can you imagine being a parent and you're getting a notification saying, Car coming, car coming, car coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't even imagine it. But, but yeah, as I said, it's, it's horses for courses. We see a lot of trades who are unfortunately had their cars broken into. It appears while the houses are getting bigger, quite often the car parking isn't there anymore. And quite often cars are parked in the street. And it becomes a security issue because people just, just go past there. It's, so, it's bad, actually. So I, I, I guess that kind of brings me into my next question because I, I know that obviously, you know, like most you know, products, most services, you've got your high end, you've got your low end. Um, I, I'm sure there's, there's reasons where you may go for a, a budget type solution, but there's also be times where you go for the high end specs. How, how should people normally look at where is appropriate to maybe go with a budget item or you know, when it makes more sense to go with the more high end specs sort of system? Good question, Ricky. It's we're both going getting too technical. A lot of the stuff you you are able these days to walk into Bunnings or to Harvey Normans and buy a security camera, and they have they have gone a heck of a lot better than they used to be years ago. So it, it really has become quite achievable, quite quite affordable and and accessible as well. You can't really compare, though, unfortunately, with what you buy in a hardware store to what security, licensed security installers can buy for the wholesaler. It's a domestic market versus a more commercial market. So if all you would like to do is have a bit of sense of security and have an overview around your home, a DIY system can definitely do the trick. As I said, they've come a lot better. And a few years ago, the, the DIY market, the recording at night was really shocking. Today, while it isn't great, it's a heck of a lot better. Is it identifiable? Well, that, that's a different question. So this is when you have to actually make the decision, what do I want to do? Let's say you're a shop owner and um, 
you want to make sure that the money in the till is always right. Having a camera being above there and then so you can really see what money goes in or out of the till doesn't only prevent long fingers, it also prevents when a client, when, when a customer says, oh, but I gave you a $50 note and you can look it up on the screen and say, no, it was actually a 20. That has happened also. But I suppose with more people also, you know, operating businesses from home, maybe they've got valued, you know, possessions that they're quite serious about taking. Because like, from, from what I'm taking away from this, a budget system is probably still going to provide some type of deterrent. Correct. Um, but it's actually, the better the quality system, the more it's going to give you an idea of what's actually happening, being able to monitor it and possibly follow up if there is an issue. Like, no one wants to know they got robbed and then not be able to do nothing about it. Ab so. Absolutely. A, a big issue we can see with this is also the actual security of the system. When you buy a more cheaper one, chances are you can be hacked. If you buy a more commercial one, like the, the, the two biggest players in the live commercial market would be your Doha and would be your Hikvision slash Hilux. Both of those systems are 132-bit encrypted, which means it is the same security as your internet banking. While what you purchase in a hardware store is just isn't there. Is, is that something that you find like, obviously you deal with a lot of people that are going to be dealing with, you know, security cameras. Um, is that something you're finding is a, a very normal, I guess, um, type of thing that people aren't realizing? Because it's not just the hardware these days, it's actually the software that's supporting it. You know, not just user friendly, but as you said, basically making sure that stuff's safe. Oh, um, totally. I, I to totally agree. P people unfortunately tend to believe, okay, I can buy it here, I just do it myself, which is great. Forces for courses, they have, they have, have come better. The, they don't realize quite, quite often there is a software, there's a wizard behind it, what need, things you need to tweak to get a better result. A lot of people are really cluey in what they're doing and they get better results than some of the back, backyard installers, yet there is a difference in settings, there's a difference in software, there's a difference in hardware and it, it reflects with what you're getting. I suppose that's the thing, you know, sometimes, you know, people can chuck it up, like there's quite a few guys are quite, you know, happy to have a go at it, um, but I suppose the, the concern is there's going to be some times where really you should be having a professional organised to, to install it, so that way it's doing the right thing, like, again, if you're planning on installing something to protect your goods, and they're expensive and they're gonna be difficult to replace and you know, not everything's covered by insurance these days, um, you know, that's gonna make sense. So I guess the, the next question is, if I'm not gonna have a crack at doing it myself, because either mm -hmm. A, it's too hard, or maybe I don't have the time or patience or the aptitude to do the install myself, who would I be getting to install that? I know your life of security, um, you know, in terms of your qualifications, if I'm correct, it's a, you need to have a security license that's to be able to do that. So, um, is that normally going to be an electrician like yourself? Because I know you're a master electrician, you're one of the most qualified people locally that we know in your space, but typically speaking, if, if someone was getting it installed interstate or in another city or out in the country, like who would they be reaching out to to do that if not themselves? Okay, the moment you engage a business to have a security system installed regardless of cameras or burglar alarms, that person and or company must be security licensed. Yes, a, a lot of people is being a DIY situation can do it themselves. I, to I totally get it. Um, the security license is there for a reason though. So a person comes, I, comes along and knows your passwords, knows your usernames, knows exactly where they are, knows where the potential down pits are, where Really they know the blind spots, things they, that they aren't being covered. Ex exactly right. They know all of that. So would you really trust anyone to do that? Not, not really. In order to get a security license, it's so heavily regulated, it's going to take quite a while. It actually takes months before you're going to get a security license. You're going to get personally checked. Your company is going to get checked. Your family is going to get checked. So from personal experience, coming from overseas, my family overseas got checked to make sure that there is not, there is no, no background there where people have been naughty, so, so, so to speak. So yes, please make sure when you get an installer in there that they are security licensed. And if, if I wasn't sure that someone does hold that certification, you know, how would you typically find it out? Would they provide some sort of permit or do you look them up on some sort of database? 
you can do both. It always pays to ask. And if you're not sure and you're somebody who actually feels quite comfortable or more comfortable doing research first, consumer or business affairs have a licensing arm into there. You can punch in either the, the, the company name, you can punch in the person's name, or you can look for security installers as such. It's a bit hard to look for them, them as such, but you can, once you have somebody and you say it's ABC Electrical, you can look them up on the CBS register and see what licenses they actually hold. And that way you know everyone's above board and you know, the incident, you know, again, I'm assuming that if they've got that license, they're gonna know how it should be placed and the questions they should be asking to make sure the, the security systems fit for purpose because obviously, as, as we discussed, you know, horses for courses, there's gonna be people that obviously need certain features and people that maybe don't need that or maybe need more. Um, yeah, I, I would be inclined to think that good value to be added from having that done. T totally. As, as an example, it also pays if you buy locally. I'm a big fan of buying locally myself. Let's, let's all help each other. It's a big com community. So, some installers choose to buy stuff from overseas and then you might have issues with uh, software comp compatibility. You might have issues as in it's outdated. You may have issues it only comes in a language other than English or if it is translated the translation is rather interesting, that's a good word. Yeah, well I suppose that's the thing, if, if you do, because you know, not any product's 100% all the time, but if you do have an issue, you want it to be resolved relatively pain free and you want to be able to have it done in a reasonable time frame. no one wants to be sending stuff away for months at a time. That's, that, that's correct. So we, we have heard stories where people bought it from overseas there was a warranty issue. Of course, you as the client always go back to the installer. It's up to the installer to then hold the warranty. That's not a good, good feature about using a licensed installer. They supply, they hold the warranty. You supply, you hold the warranty. If you now need to be on a, on a, on a phone call to somebody overseas and you try to explain to them something, you never know what you're getting. The installer would be in a similar situation. There is a number of reputable wholesalers here in Adelaide where they are just a phone call away, they're helpful and you get stuff really organized within half an hour if needs be. Has it happened? Yes, it has. Would it happen again? Probably. But I'd rather have that somebody local is going to be able to pick up the phone and say, hi Johnny, here's Electrical, Gary, this is what we're looking at. What can you, what can you help? And it's probably easier when you do have some sort of issue with you know, hardware if you've got someone who knows what they're doing, talking to the person on the other end, you know, if I was to, you know, go to a wholesaler, buy something, put it in, okay, I might be reasonably tech savvy, but I, I guarantee the person on the other end of the phone is going to go, well, what's Ricky done? He's not, he's not holding a security license. He's, he's not a sparky. He's not anyone that's really yeah. a, a trade person. Um, there's probably going to be a, a good measure of, well, has Ricky broken it? <laughs> you know, you never, you, but you never know. You that's never, the thing. You never know. Ch chances are there. I, I know you're a very cluey fella, and I know you, you, you work things out. So I wouldn't have any doubt that you would be very good get, getting a domestic system like, like a... Like a uh, swan or like something a like swan. that. I'm, I'm very confident that you, that you were able to get it off the shelf, put it in yourself, inst install it, and set it up. Not everybody is, is, that, is, is that savvy, and some people might, might need help with that. So some people might say, okay, I buy my own, but I get somebody else to, to install it. Fine, please consider in, in, in that moment that it can't really be customized because you're getting what's in the box. Well, yeah, it's the old uh, cookie cutter saying. You know, you, you're basically getting something that's just been mass market, and you know, it, it's, in, it's basically made for people to throw up themselves and you know, maybe it's not gonna be fit for you if you've got, I guess, unique things that you're trying to keep an eye on or whether you're running a, a business from home where for argument's sakes, there's probably gonna be a decent amount of hardware or maybe intellectual property that you really need to have safe. Ab absolutely, intellectual property is when sometimes the cameras can't face a certain way so you can't see what's on the screen, otherwise you compromise and it can be recorded. It, it could be where, what, what's a good example? Let's, let's talk about people in country. When you have properties which are larger than your, than your average size block in the city, and let's say you got horse stables at the back, and let's say you've got a neighbor who plays silly buggers with the horses. Yeah, well, if something hurts your, your animal, Correct. Maybe it's not directly hurting, but you know, spooks, you know, spooks a horse, 
horse hurts itself, okay, well now I've got a huge vet bill. Correct. Now, how do you hold anyone accountable if your security system isn't really made to obviously with that in mind to keep the horses in good focus at a high level? It's correct because your standard cameras which you would buy and let's pick on this once now are designed to let's say get you 10 12 meters around you perfectly fine but not 60 meters down the driveway while a very focal camera can actually go towards there yeah and if you're talking acreage you know you're talking boundaries of you know a couple of hundred meters which absolutely you know 12 to 20 meters probably not going to cut it off. no it's, it's, it's just not, not going to get there but again there is a market for it and if this is what you need Great, great. Well, I suppose, yeah, that, you know, that all, that all makes sense. And, you know, at the very least, if you're speaking with someone who holds that security license, you know, they can have a chat with you about, hey, well, this is your house or this is your, your place of work. This is what your needs are. This is what I would recommend. And then, you know, you're in a position to make a decision about, you know, is there an investment there that you weren't aware of and you now need to make in order to do the job properly? Cor correct. It doesn't hurt to ask. And somebody who is actually really proud in what they do are always happy to share their experience with you. So somebody who really wants the best for their client will always tell you, look, consider this, look at this, have you considered that? Sometimes you don't even know that there is a blind spot somewhere or you, have, you haven't thought about it, which is cool. That's, that's, that's the job of the license installer to design it for your purpose. It could even be just simple as, you know, you, you get uh, your own system, there's a set number of cameras, it's not till you realise, oh, I'm short a couple of cameras that you, you know, it sounds silly, but I'm sure there's people that have gone, put their own system up, worked out it's not what it's, you know, what it should be, and then next thing you know, you've, you've got a, a security technician coming out and happening to put a new system in or add a second system because they haven't really worked out what they need when they've started. Probably, in some cases, can end up being more expensive than just getting a professional to start with. It, it can actually be. Let's not forget the installation is literally the same, regardless if it's a, an off-the-shelf DIY system or if it's a semi-commercial system which a, a, an installer will get into you. The work to install is the exact same. The time to set it up, it can be less time consuming to have a professional system over a cheapy one because of the software and the interface being a lot more user friendly and the features you're getting are there. Do you need one? I don't know. Everybody has to make their own decisions in, 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 in that regard. Yet there is reasons why there is differences in between. Yeah, well, as, as, as I think we've, <laughs> we've covered pretty well, you know, there's, uh, there's going to be times where, as you said, you know, you're just looking for a deterrent. There's, you know, other times when you, you're really just going to have a few, I guess, key things that are driving that decision to put the cameras up. Let's talk about deterrent for a second. Let's say there is like three different types of people who are naughty. There is the opportunists, they're going to smash, grab and run. And it doesn't matter what security put up there. They they're going to get in, they're going to get in. Correct. They're going to grab, they're going to fuel their habits. On the opposite spectrum are the ones who know you've got the HQ Monaro sitting in the shed and they want to have this car. They're going to move heaven and earth to find a way to get in. I wish I had HQ Monaro, I don't. So for me, this is not applicable. The majority of people happen to be in the middle and that's when the naughty guys look for the easy targets. So they can see the difference between a DIY system and a commercial one. If they have a choice to go somewhere, they choose where they can see there's less resistance, if, if that makes sense. That's, that's right. And as, as you know, security cameras become more common, there's going to be less houses without cameras, which means now we have a choice, typically speaking, as we get more and more that hey, if all of them have cameras now, it's who's got the good cameras and who has you know, the not so good cameras. Sure, and quite often people say, all I would like to have is one above the front door, so if the front door rings, I can quickly look up who it is and I don't have to be, be worried. Let's talk about a parent. The, the, the parent is at work nine to five, the kid comes home at three o'clock from school and it's gonna be the next couple of hours along before the parent comes home. If they have a camera sitting above the front door and they get a notification if somebody rings the front door, they can make sure the kid is safe. In an occasion like that, a DIY system can be perfectly fine to actually fulfill this particular need. Fully support, I'm, I'm, I'm not fully supportive. Oh, no, that, that, and that, that would make sense. A lot of the time as parents, you, you just want to know where your kids are and they're safe. <laughs> pretty much. So. Pretty much. Well, Gary, that, that's been really helpful. I'm, I'm sure everyone's taken a lot away from that. 
um, yeah, thank you very much for coming in and looking forward to obviously having our next chat. Oh yeah, th thanks for having me, Ricky. I hope it was sort of helpful that people can make a more informed decision because at the end of the day, the more information you have, the better you can make going forward, basically. So yeah, no, thanks for having me, appreciate it. Thanks, much Ricky. appreciated. Thanks, Gary. See you guys. Thanks. <laughs>